everyone, welcome to JFFI. We're so glad that you've decided to join us this morning. Here at JFFI, our vision is to change lives and to raise champions. Yes, and also to raise world-class leaders. So wherever you're joining us from across the world, make sure to leave a comment in the chat. It's amazing to connect with each and every one of you. God has been blessing us with so many testimonies. So please feel free to leave your prayer requests in the chat below so we can join you in prayer. Absolutely. And it's that time. It's countdown to service. And I know you surely will be blessed. So stay through the service. So get comfortable and get ready to, to be, be blessed. blessed. to prominence keys to prominence now in first service we spoke about joseph a little bit we said joseph had god's presence upon him talking about the keys to prominence and we identified that the major thing the major thing that kept joseph through was the presence of god upon his life but the compass of his life was guided by the vision the vision the vision was the compass, was the, the thing that was keeping him, that was helping, helping him through all the circumstances he was going through. So he was able to stay true because of the vision. But the presence of God was fundamental to make sure that whatever he does prospered. And it was so obvious that the master noticed it. So it wasn't something that wasn't noticeable. It was so noticeable. And you know the word prominence means outstanding, remarkable, importance. When you get to a point where you are relevant, you are easily seen, you are visible. A prominent personality is somebody who is well respected and you know notable in the society. So, but then let's look at the key things. We mentioned these two things. But Joseph also had some other things that kept him. Joseph had um, strong work ethics. He was not um, a lazy man. He was somebody who was very hardworking, who would complete his task, who would even ask for more. You know, he was somebody who was diligent and hardworking. A lazy man, if he gets to the pro if he gets to the top or gets a permanent position, cannot sustain it. You can't. You must develop strong work ethics you know quite a lot of people want easy way out they've not trained themselves um, build up themselves to the point where anywhere they are found whatever has been committed to their hands they do it excellently and they take it to the next level that was the kind of person joseph was so he had a strong work ethics and he was somebody who would take anything you give him to another level and you need to build up yourself to be like that. Then whatever has been committed to your hands, you do it well. You do it excellently. Whether you're being paid or not being paid, that is your value. Anything I find my hand doing, I do it well. Because some people will not do some things well because they'll say, well, I'm not well paid, I'm not well remunerated, or I'm even doing it voluntary. That does not mean you shouldn't do it well. Because you don't know who is going to see you. You don't know. So doing it well, it's a, a function of strong work ethic. David was also like that. When he was looking after the father's sheep in the garden, in the, in the wilderness, and the lion came, he fought the lion, killed the lion. A bear came, he killed the bear. Do you understand? He could have said, after I've not been paid, I won't put my life at risk for all this. Do you understand? But because they have developed themselves to be like that, so anywhere they are, they are like that. Glory be to God. And it's important, those are some of the important attributes you should have. Then Joseph also had divine wisdom. We're talking about keys to prominence. And we're looking at Joseph as a case studies now. He had divine wisdom. His wisdom was something else. And this was what you could see in Genesis chapter 41, verse 39. You could see what Pharaoh said about him. 
Genesis 41, 39. Project the scripture for us. You will see what he said about him. And then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all these, all these, there is no one as designing and wise as you. That took him to what? Prominence. Because Pharaoh has interacted with all the magicians. He has interacted with all the astrologers. He has interacted with anybody, all the best in the entire region, in the whole of Egypt and beyond. He has interacted and he saw that there was none as discerning and as wise as Joseph. So what did he do? Go to the next verse. You shall be over my household. People want the best. Everybody wants the best. You want the best to be in charge of your things. That's why people hire the best. So you have to be the best. He said, you shall be over my household and all my people shall be ruled according to your world. This is somebody just came out of prison. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. Now because wisdom was seen. And how do you see wisdom? You see wisdom when people talk. You see wisdom when you hang around people. When you go to people's homes, you see a level of wisdom they carry. The layout of the home. Anywhere you go, you see the level. Wisdom is seen, is displayed because people act according to the level of their knowledge. He spoke and the man saw discernment and saw wisdom. The Bible says if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask. If you lack wisdom, you ask God. So he had that. So he could see the practicality. Now, how can a young boy be talking about, you know, economic strategizing and forecasting? He didn't even go to university. Where did he get all that thing from? How will he, how will he be talking about record keeping, human resources, you know, acquisition of real estate? You know, everything he gave you, talking about legislation, let Pharaoh do this. Now, this is somebody who was at 17, was sold as a slave. He was in Potiphar's house. How did he learn all these things? He was developing himself. And with the wisdom of God, he knew more than everybody else. He knew management, he knew administration, he knew leadership. Just a young boy. And the time he came into prominence, guess how old he was? 30 years old. That was when he became the ruler of all of the people of Egypt. God can lift you up. Some of you think that you are still young and you still think you can do more. You can achieve more. Glory be to God. You see somebody who says, I'm 30 years old, I still have time. Yes, you still have time, but start doing more. Are you getting my point? At 30, David became the king of Judah. So build up yourself and develop this wisdom. Which means you need to increase your learning. Read books. Some people after graduating from the university, that's the last time they read It must be your lifestyle, acquisition of knowledge, information, reading, be a reader. If you are not a reader, you cannot be a leader. Engage your mind into productivity. Glory be to God. So David, Joseph rather, was such a person. He had so much knowledge and you could see it when he started speaking. And let me tell you something. One unique thing about Joseph was that when he was called up, it wasn't like they've given him one or two months notice that, Joseph, get ready. You're going to speak to Pharaoh. It's going to be next week or two weeks' time. It was an impromptu meeting. It was an impromptu. He was in the prison. They just grabbed him, shaved him, dressed him up, and they brought him before Pharaoh, and then he's been interviewed. And he still did well. So what does that say to us? We need to keep on 
developing ourselves. Keep on improving who you are, regardless of what you are going through. Don't let what you are going through overcome who you are. Are you getting my point? No matter what the issue is, don't let it change you or reduce you or stop you from developing yourself. So Joseph is, is one of the person we need to emulate, emulate him, his lifestyle. It's an example, a role model for anyone who wants to get to the top. And another point about him was that he also knew how to recognize opportunities. Joseph knew. Do you know that Joseph was very loyal? He was very loyal. He didn't go behind. Everything was so transparent. He recognized the opportunities. He knew that God had positioned the baker and the butler in the same prison with him. He walked his way to the point where they would put him. You know, have you ever imagined why they would put him in such a prison? That means he was a man of honor. There was something different about him that would make possible not to put him in any half prison. That would put him in the prison where they put the king's people. High class people. And he was able to recognize the opportunity by the vision when those people were talking. And he saw that this is going to be killed in three days. This one is going to be released in three days. And he said to that man, when you are released, mention my case to the and he waited. He waited. Even some people, you know, they still send message from the prison. They send message to them and that you are an ungrateful person. I helped you. You now forgot me. You'll be throwing curses. And the man would not have even mentioned his case. And they would have fought. But there was a wise boy who waited for the time. He knew the time would come. The time of promotion would come. The time of elevation will come. He waited for the time. Vision is for an appointed time. What God has said concerning you will definitely come to pass. Amen. Glory be to God. So this is important for you to, to note. Now let's go on to the next key important thing. Which I want to mention to you is making true decisions. Making true decisions. Joel 3 14. Joel, the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 14. Can you read that for us? Or project that for us? It talks about multitude in the valley of decision. Multitude, multitude in the valley of decision. But the day of the Lord is near the valley of decision. Multitude. True decisions are the catalysts. For transforming our vision into reality. True decisions. When I mean by true decisions, I'm talking about healthy decisions, well-informed decision. It's not a decision that is made shabbily or in a rush. This is a decision you've prayed over, you've thought over, and you know that this is what God wants me to do. It has a way of transforming your entire life. It has an eruptive force that makes, you know, that just makes everything about you change. And it was not something that this kind of ability that God has given to us, true decision, is not something that is reserved for a certain class of people. It is being given to every child of God and that's why you have the Holy Spirit to guide you through to be able to make wise decisions. The difference between the poor and the rich is a decision they make. The Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. It said you should choose life. So your choices determines how far you go in life.
So people who rise to prominence, they have insight, foresight. They are able to know how to make the right decisions. Because they know decisions play a vital role in unlocking the potentials that God has put in them. But you know, a lot of people don't take it important. They don't know, they don't take decision making important. People just go with it. Whatever happens, happens. They just flow with it, with the wind, they flow with the stream, whatever. But that's not how God wants us to do it. God wants us to sit down and pray through and sit down and, and get enough information to be able to make the right decision. Because without making the right decision, it could stop you from becoming what God has destined to become. It could stop you from becoming prominent. So how do I make a right decision? How do I make a true decision? How? Number one, you pray through. You must pray through. Decisions must never be made in a hurry, in a rush. You pray through over any matter. When it has to do with your future, your destiny, your career, your marriage, your home, you need to pray through. You sit down, you pray, God, what are you saying? What do you want me to do? You pray through. And when you've done that, you know, because you need to know that prayer is a two-way communication. Prayer is a two-way communication. You speak to God, God speaks back to you. When you have spoken to God, if you have not had anything back from God, don't make a decision. You wait. Why is your wait and what do you do? You study God's word. You study his word in relation to the decisions you want to make. Find out people in the Bible who were in the same position as you are now. What did they do? How did they get over it? What were the risks involved? Everything is in the scripture. You see this particular man, uh, what was this? These four leprous people. They had to make a decision. If we stay here, we die. If we go there, we die. Which one is better? Which one will give us the prospect? And as they were moving, God took over. Praise God. So when you study the word, the word will guide you and let you to know how to make decisions. A lot of people make decisions just only purely based on experience. It's not good enough. Praise God. People make decisions based on various things. Those things that are not scripturally based are not sound enough. There is a way that seemed right unto man, the end thereof leader to death. So study the word of God in relation to the decisions you want to make. Get enough information from the scripture. Let it be your governing principle. When you are studying the word, when you are praying, then you listen to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Sometimes through scriptures. Sometimes it will speak directly to your heart. But you will have clarity, sound clarity of what you want to do and what you should do. Listening to the Holy Spirit. It's going to be quite hard for you to listen to the Holy Spirit, recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit, if you are filling your heart with junk, with news that is not scriptural. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So hearing God's word, studying God's word, meditating God's word, ensuring that your mind is being renewed by God's word. Those are the things that helps you to make informed decisions, good decisions that will in turn impact on your destiny. And once the Spirit of God has spoken to you that these and these are the things you should do, you still need a confirmation. Your word is confirmed in the word of two or three witnesses, two or three mouths. So you still need a confirmation. That's where it might be through preaching, it might be through a prophet, it might be through a friend, it might be through anybody. They will just speak something to just confirm what God has said to you. And once you've gotten that confirmation, the next thing is you act on it. It's not good enough for you to know what to do and then to still sit still and be procrastinating. You act on it. 
Make a true commitment and stick to that commitment. Be flexible in your approach. Act on it. Make that commitment and say, I am going to do this. And that is what you do. Glory be to God. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. So decisions are very important. Because every day we make decisions. You make decisions about your life, about your career, about what to eat, what to wear, where to go, what to do. It's important. So you developing yourself on how to make right decisions is very important if you want to get to prominence. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. There are three decisions that controls a man's destiny. Three. The first one is, what do you want to achieve? What do you want to achieve? What is your focus? Now, this must be clearly defined by vision. Because sometimes it can be too ambitious. And ambition may not be in line with the will of God for your life. So God will not put his approval on it. Because your ambition does not align. Your ambition is going to throw you off God's agenda. Your ambition is going to destroy you. And so God doesn't put his blessing. So you have to make sure that whatever you want to achieve in life aligns with the will of God. It is God's agenda for you. That's the vision. The mental picture. This is exactly what God wants me to do. And that is what you focus on. Because there are so many things that want to distract you. There are so many issues, circumstances that are unpleasant. That want to put you off. Push you off. But you've got to say to yourself, no. This is what I know God wants me to do. And I want to achieve it. And I'm going to put all my effort in making it happen. Once you're able to resolve that, then it goes to the second question. Which is, what are the things that are of great value to you? What are the things that are of great value to you? What are the things that are uttermost in your mind? Because sometimes people want to achieve certain things, but they don't have the right values for it. If you don't have the right values... For what you want to achieve, you won't be able to achieve it. King Saul was afraid of David. Because he's known that David has something about kingship in him. Because the way David is even behaving got him afraid. This guy is even behaving like a king. He's talking like a king. He's acting like a king. He, everything about him is just well behaved. Properly. So he's afraid that this is the next king. He knew. So let's terminate him. Glory be to God. So what are the things that are of great value to you? Those are the things you need to note. And begin to work on them. Begin to build yourself to become. Because until you become that man that God wants you to become, you cannot fulfill your purpose on earth. So you've got to become first before you can do. Somebody shout amen. And then finally, number three, what to do to create the results you desire. What are the things you need to do to create the results that you desire? What are the things? That's where you might need to go into the place of fasting and prayers. You might need to, you know, seek some counselors. You might need to inquire. Whatever you need to do. That's why once the Spirit of God has given you, begins to guide you and direct you and lead you. Because if you don't develop yourself, you know, some people don't even make, they don't develop themselves on how to make good decisions. They don't know how to make sound judgment. It's one of the things you need to develop. If you're going to be a business, successful businessman, run a successful family, whatever you want to do, if you don't develop the ability to make sound judgment through decisions, if you're going to struggle. I pray the Lord will give you grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout amen. amen. The Lord will release grace upon you. And I prophesy 
that everyone here will get to the point of relevance. You will become prominent. God will move you from obscurity into prominence. And you will succeed in Jesus' name. There are some habits you might need to drop. Because habits can slow you down. Habit is what eventually becomes your character. If you don't stop it, it becomes your character. People know you for it. And you know the anointing, your gifting can take you to the top. But your character is what sustains you there. Glory be to God. So if you don't develop that path, that could mess up your entire destiny. And I pray that grace be released upon you in Jesus' name. That beginning from today, the Lord will help you to make wise decisions. That when you open your mouth to speak, it will be full of wisdom. That the Lord will touch your mind, that your mind will become productive. That you will have the ability to study God's word, to meditate on God's word, to be able to acquire wisdom in Jesus' name. I declare from today, you will rise to the top. Nothing will stop you. Nothing will limit your greatness. You will succeed in all your endeavors. The keys has been given to you. The keys has been given to you. And you will break through in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So please, on a final note, don't ever allow whatever you're going through hinder you or change you into what you are not. You are always a winner. You're always a champion. You are always more than a conqueror. And you will succeed in life. So you go and develop the act of making healthy decisions. Train up yourself. Build up yourself. And I pray that the Lord will be with you in the journey of life in Jesus' name. Thank you for being a part of the service today. We at JFFI celebrate and honor you. Yes, we're so glad that you've decided to join us today and we look forward to seeing you again. So please stay connected. And you can join us for any of our midweek services starting on Wednesday at 7 p.m. with the Bible study in the church auditorium. On Friday at 7 p.m. with the Workers Empowerment Service. And on Sunday, you could join us for two services. First service at 10.30 a.m. and second service at 12.30 p.m. And if you'd like to support what God is doing, please send your donations through our website at www.jffi.org. So it's been great having you guys here today. So until next time, stay blessed. Stay blessed. Stay blessed.